Hello, Calculus BC, and welcome to uh, our chapter on optimization. This chapter is all about finding the absolute maximums and the absolute minimums. Also, a special note, I'm recording this from a new room in my house I have not recorded a video from, so that should be very exciting. Okay, so here's the extreme value theorem. The extreme value theorem, I mean, you've had the mean value theorem and the intermediate value theorem. You want something a little more extreme, right? X games are coming up. So the extreme value theorem says this. If you have some function, and that function is continuous, on the closed interval from A to B, there must be a C. So there is a C. Oops. There is a C somewhere on the interval from A to B with F of that C being greater than or equal to F of X for all X on the interval from A to B. So what this is saying is there is some point, some C, where that point is greater than or equal to F of X, there is some absolute maximum. So this is saying if you have a continuous function from A to B, there's some point in the middle that's greater than or equal to all the others. There's some absolute max that's at least as high or higher than every other point. And same with an absolute min. There is also going to be an absolute min everywhere. Okay, so if you have just this blue function here and you're looking from A to B and you're saying like looking at this picture, well, the absolute maximum would be at the left end point, right? That's the very highest point. The absolute minimum would be kind of at this point right here. And this is something that I want to remind you of. There are only two possibilities for where a minimum or a maximum can occur. One of those is the endpoints of the interval. So that would be A and B. And then the other one is the critical points. And in particular, uh, we want to look for any local maxes or local mints. And what you're going to see is that all these problems kind of follow the same strategy. Basically, you're just going to check the endpoints, check the critical points, and plug them in to find which one's the biggest. So let's look at a relatively straightforward example. Find the minimum value of x cubed minus 12x plus 3 between 0 and 4, so that's like your a and your b, at what x does it occur? All these problems are the same. So what you're going to do is you're going to find the possibilities. And the possibilities are going to be the endpoints and the critical points. Okay, so my endpoints here are x equals 0 and x equals 4. As for my critical points, that's where the derivative equals 0. So my f prime is 3x squared minus 12 equals 0. So I factor to 3, I'm left with x squared minus 4. So x could be 2 or x could be negative 2. Now, I'm looking between 0 and 4. So does negative 2 matter? No. Let's go ahead and cross that off. Now, the second step here that I have to do, once I find my possibilities, now I'm just going to plug in each value to f. So I have these three possibilities, or maybe four or five in some cases, and I'm going to plug those all back into f, and then I'm going to answer the question. So the question asks me to find the minimum value of f from 0 to 4. So I'm going to take these three possibilities and plug them in 0 to 4. Okay, so f of 0, that equals 3, done. f of 4, 4 cubed is 64 uh, minus 48 plus 3, oh jeez, that's 16 plus 3, I got 19, great. And then if I want to find f of 2, f of 2 is 8 minus 24 plus 3, so I got negative 13. Okay. Now the question asks me for the minimum value and find what x it occurs. So to help me answer my question, let's go ahead and just do that. Okay, so I have 3, I have 19, and negative 13. So my minimum is negative 13 at x equals 2. This is how you want to write up your problems, and this is the work you need to be showing, maybe without like these crazy arrows that I've drawn. But the important part here is that I went through, I listed each of my possibilities, I checked the endpoints, I checked the critical points, I plugged them all into my function, and I made sure I answered the question. It doesn't matter if you're doing a min or max, you're still going to do the same strategy. And if I were doing a max, everything would be the exact same up until the last step when I would have just picked what was going on at 4 instead. So the strategy is the same on all of these problems. Um, we look at the endpoints, we look at the critical points, we plug them in. Uh, you might have to do a little work to find the critical points, but same general idea. Okay, let's get some word problems here. 
Um, so these are where you're really going to see it in, in real life situations. And companies do this kind of analysis all the time. They try to you know, find a maximum profit. They try to find a minimum amount of material they're going to use. Um, you know, they try and use the least amount of energy possible. These are real situations that companies always deal with. And calculus is how they do it. Okay, the minimum product are two numbers that have a difference of 100. Okay, so I'm trying to find the minimum product. So the product that I'm trying to minimize is x times y. I'm just calling two numbers x and y. And the problem tells me the two numbers have a difference of 100. So that means that x minus y is equal to 100. I should clarify that's a multiplication there. Okay, so now these are my variables. This is kind of what's given to me. What is the function that I'm trying to optimize? Okay, so the one I'm trying to optimize here is the product. My product is x times y. Now, when we're taking a derivative, um, or we're doing an integral, we want it to be in terms of one variable. So I want to use the given uh, to write this in terms of just one variable. So I'm going to use this relationship, x minus y equals 100, and solve for x or solve for y, it doesn't really matter. So I'm going to add y to both sides, so that tells me x equals 100 plus y. And the reason I'm going to do that is now I can plug that in here and write that my product is 100 plus y times y, also known as 100y plus y squared. Okay. So now let's continue with the problem. Now that I have this function, now I'm ready to go ahead and look at the possibilities and then for each possibility, I'm going to go ahead and find f. Okay, so my possibilities. Do you guys see any endpoints here? No, there are no endpoints here. None are given. If I give you an interval from 0 to 2, you know the endpoint is 0 and 2. If I don't give you the interval, there are no endpoints. So none. Okay, so the minimum has got to be at one of the critical points. In this case, there's only one. So the derivative of the product is 100 plus uh, 2y. So I'll set that equal to 0. So I'll get y equals negative 50. All right, now let's answer the question. The question asks for what is the product, right? Find the minimum product. So the other number, x, x is 100 plus y. So x is negative, uh, geez, 100 minus 50, x is positive 50. So my product is 50 times negative 50, also known as negative 2,500. Oh, no, I did not mean to do that. Negative 2,500. Okay. Cool. So that's a little convoluted, but basically what this is doing is you're taking two numbers that are 100 apart. So you're saying, what if I do, you know, like 100 times 0? What if I do 110 times 10? What if I do, you know, 80 times negative 20? And we're answering, like, what is the two numbers that I can pick that when I multiply them together, I get the smallest possible product? And that's what you guys found. It's 50 and negative 50. So... I like these problems a little bit. All right, let's go with some other ones. So here's another example. Find the x values with the smallest and largest. So that means a min and largest means a max. Vertical distance between the graphs of x squared and 3x from 0 to 2. Okay, so we're going to look from 0 to 2. So x squared we know is going to look something like that. And then 3x, it's pretty bad here, but 3x is going to look something like that. So when we say a vertical distance, that just means like a straight vertical line. Like just if I pick some x value, what is the distance between the two points there? And the vertical distance here, the distance between two curves, isn't that just the top function minus the bottom? Right, like if I have one function in 7 and the other function in 2, the distance between them is just 7 minus 2. So that distance between them is just top minus bottom. Like how far am I from the top curve to the bottom? Okay, so distance between them here is 3x minus x squared. What we can see is, is as those functions get closer together at different points, that distance between them changes at different x values. Okay, so now that I have my distance, um, I've set that up. Now I'm ready to go ahead and find my endpoints and then find my critical points and then go ahead and find the distance to answer the question. Okay, so my endpoints here are x equals 0 and x equals 2. Those were given to me. And my critical point is when my distance prime is 0. So 3 minus 2x equals 0. So my x is 3 halves. Okay. So now all I have to do is find the distance at each of these. So I have these 3x values. I need to go ahead and plug those in to this formula right here. Okay, so again, all these problems are the same. The setup is a little different. The setup of like coming up with this equation that you're trying to find the max or find the minimum of is different. 
But all these problems, you just need to find where the endpoints are, find where the critical points are, and then just go ahead and plug in somewhere. Um, and that's what you're going to see in all these. So when I plug in 0 into this equation, my distance is 0. That's probably going to be my minimum. When I plug in 2, my distance there is 6 minus 4, so I have a distance of 2. When I plug in 3 halves, my distance is 3 times 3 halves minus 3 halves squared. All right, so that'll be 9 halves minus 9 fourths. So that's equal to 9 fourths. Okay, so that's 2 and a fourth. Uh, so that's going to be my maximum distance. So my maximum distance is at x equals 3 halves. And my minimum distance is at x equals 0. That's how you want to answer these questions, right? I'm clearly saying, what is my min? What is my x? It asked for the x values, and I gave both of those values there. But this is what your work should look like. You say, okay, here are the critical points. Here are the endpoints. What are the values of d at each of those? That's how you show your work on this type of problem. Okay, so let's get to a situation here. One of my friends is a rhinoceros farmer, and he has a 2,400 feet of fence, and he wanted to fence a rectangular field. He, he tried to figure it out himself, and I forget a calco, so he wanted me to ask my students. So we have a straight river here, no fence on the river. Rhinos aren't very good at swimming. So you're going to build a fence that looks like this. Um, and I'm going to encourage you on a problem like this, let's draw a picture. Okay. So it's a rectangular field, and he wants to give the rhinos the most possible room to roam. So he's trying to put some rhinos in there. And, you know, rhinos are, like, endangered or something. I don't know. I don't, Jesus, I don't know. But, well, it was going well for a while. Anyway, so he wants to give his rhino as much space as possible um, so that it can relax and graze and run and, and whatever it wants. Okay, we're trying to find the dimensions of the field with the largest area. So we're trying to find the largest area. That means we're trying to maximize the area. So what is the area of a rectangle? It's base times height. So let's see, we need some equations here. So I'm going to have uh, some base, let's call it x, and some height, let's call it y. Okay. So we're trying to find the area. And the area of a rectangle, of course, is base times height. So the area is x times y. Now, right away, I remember, I want to write this in terms of one variable. So it's easier for me to take a derivative and stuff. Okay. So if my area is x times y, well, huh, I want to write that in one variable. What else do I know? Well, if I have 2,400 feet, that means that these three sides, 1, 2, 3, must add up to 2,400. So if I do y plus x plus y, it should give me 2,400. So going ahead now, I have x plus 2y equals 2,400. So if I want to write this equation here in terms of one variable, I can. I could solve for either x or y here. x looks pretty easy to solve for. If you solve for y, that's fine. So x is 2400 minus 2y. So if I plug that in up there, that tells me that my area is equal to uh, 2400 minus 2y times y, also known as 2400y minus 2y squared. All right, now it asks for the dimensions of the field with the largest area, so I need to take the derivative here. Um, I, th th there are no endpoints per se. Like, I mean, I guess you could say that, like, y equals 0 is an endpoint. Like, you could have the river, and you could just have it 2,400 feet straight across. But you can see that's terrible. That's, like, the worst possible solution. That's not going to give me a maximum amount of area. Um, but if they don't really explicitly give you endpoints in a problem, there aren't any endpoints. I wouldn't worry too much about it. But we do need to find the critical points. So the critical point is when the area prime is 0. So we have 2400 minus 4y equals 0. So that happens when y equals 600. Okay, let's answer the question. The question asks for the dimensions of the field. So the dimensions are like, what is the base times height? You know, kind of, what are the sides of the rectangles? So if I know that my height is is 600. I know my x, using this equation here, is 2400 minus 2 times 600, so that's 1200. So my dimensions are going to be, it's 1200 by 600. I'm always making sure that I answer the question. Um, okay, so that's what we did. We started with this area formula that we had to come up with on our own. We wrote it in terms of one variable. That is really crucial, guys. Um, and then once I'd done that, uh, I took the derivative, set it to zero to find a critical point, and I was able to, to figure out, okay, there's only one critical point, so then that's got to be the maximum, and then I could answer my question. Okay, these are great. Uh, bring some questions to class so I can answer, and I'll see you guys soon. Thanks for watching.